Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find the length of the longest common prefix. So we're not dealing with strings this time, actually, we're dealing with numbers. So numbers can also have prefixes. So assume that this is our first array and suppose we have a second array as well, which is just gonna be this one for this relatively simple example. The idea is we want to, let's say, enumerate all pairs from these two sets. So like this is one pair, this is a second pair, and this is a third pair. Imagine that this had a second element, then it would be more interesting. We'd have like the same pairs from previously, but we'd also have now this pair, this pair, and this pair. So to get all the pairs, it's not difficult, just have nested loops. Now among each pair, we want to determine what is the longest prefix between those two integers. So a prefix is basically any sequence starting from the beginning. So in terms of these two integers, we're considering the digits. So let's start at the beginning of these two numbers. Well, they don't share the same leading digit, therefore the longest common prefix between them is going to be of length zero. So we care about the length of the prefix. Now, if we were to do this for every single pair, we'd find that this pair is the one that has the longest common prefix, because take a look, the same digit in the first spot, the same digit in the second spot, the same digit in the third spot. So that means the longest prefix is of length three between these two. And that's actually the result for this example. And that's exactly what we end up returning. So I kind of just told you how to solve this problem, at least in a brute force way. What would you say is the time complexity of this? Because just understanding the time complexity can be useful for optimizing the solution because we can figure out where the bottleneck is happening. So let's assume that this array is of length n, this one is m, that's gonna be n times m because of the comparisons, like the nested loops. And then what about the actual comparison itself? Well, we're only dealing with positive numbers, thankfully, so no leading zeros and no negative numbers. That makes things simple, but still, a number could be pretty large. I don't think it's gonna be larger than 32 bits. So theoretically, to do that comparison, is gonna be constant. Like a 32-bit integer, I believe, is only gonna have like up to 12, something like that, digits. So theoretically, that should be a constant time operation. But now, even if we had, let's say, an arbitrarily large number, let's call it x. x is a very large number. It's the maximum number among all of these. How many digits would it possibly have? Well, that could be computed with log base 10 of x. How many times can you divide x by 10 until it reaches one? That's pretty much what log does. The way I actually wrote that math formula was technically wrong. This is kind of the more precise way uh, to do it. Let's say, I don't really know what to call this. I'll call it n, even though I'm reusing it. That This is not the same n. But, you know, if you were to solve this, you'd solve it with log, and then you'd realize that log base 10 will be the formula. But anyways, you could assume this is a constant or you could just use this. It doesn't really matter. I would honestly, in an interview, just say it's constant and probably your interviewer will be fine with that. I don't think they care about you talking about logarithms. So either way, this is the overall time complexity. Now, how do we even do that digit comparison? Because I think that's an important thing to consider. Suppose we start with this number. How do you get the leading digit? It's actually not trivial. The easier way to do this is honestly to probably just convert this into a string using like a built-in method and then probably split the string into a list of characters. Actually, you could probably just use the original string itself and then just do kind of a comparison character by character. That's one valid way. You could also convert this into a list, like just taking digit by digit from the bottom. You would do that with the mod by 10 operator to get that digit. So this time, modding by 10 would give us zero. If there was like a three here, modding by 10 would give us three, we'd get that digit. And then we'd keep doing that continuously. And to get to the next digit, we'd probably just divide this thing by 10 because that removes the smallest digit. So that's one way to do it. That would possibly build an array that looks like this, probably in reverse order. And then we'd have another array here that would look something like this. And then we could do kind of a comparison, let's say starting from the end and just see, okay, well, there's a match here, match here, match here. And then we ran out of characters here. Now, I think the string method is easier, but who knows, maybe your interviewer would prefer you to not use built-in methods. That's why I'm just talking about this. But either way, we're seeing that the comparison is kind of the problem. 
So we can't necessarily remove the fact that we will have to look at every prefix of a given number. But that's not the bottleneck, right? For a number to convert it into all of its prefixes could be considered constant. But the comparison, if I want to take this number and compare it to all the prefixes of every other number, that's going to be O of M, obviously, if we have to go through the whole array. Do you know of a data structure that could possibly speed that up? Well, a hash map or a hash set is going to allow us to do this in constant time for the most part. But what exactly would we want to do? Would we just want to throw all of these numbers into a hash set? Because that doesn't necessarily work. This doesn't match any of these numbers, but we do know that it does have a common prefix of length one. So what should we do? Well, the easiest thing is to take each number, split it into all of its prefixes. This number would be one, 10, 100, and a thousand. These are all the prefixes of this given number. And just throw all of those into a hash set and do that for every number. The hash set will be proportional to the length of the string. Well, I guess technically you could multiply it by log base 10 of whatever the max number is in that array. But for the most part, this is going to be a constant. So we can kind of just assume that the space will be M. Now, if we do that, this problem does become relatively trivial. Just to make this more interesting, though, I'm going to change this number here to 1001. To make it very, very clear what we're going to do, we're going to take one of these lists, take every number from it, get all the prefixes of it, and then throw it into a hash set. We do that for every one of these numbers. Then from one of the other arrays, we're not just going to check, does this number exist in the hash set and then take the length of this number because while it does work for this number we'll get a length of one and it does work for this number we'll get a length of two because this number does exist and its length is two it won't work for this number this number does not exist in that hash set but we know that this does have a common prefix with this element so for each of these numbers as well we're actually going to get all of the prefixes and for each of the prefixes we're going to check if that prefix exists in the hash set and the longest one will be the one that we actually care about now listen to what i just said a second ago the longest one is the one that we care about so when we're getting the prefixes of this do we actually need to start from the beginning and consider the smallest prefixes wouldn't it be easier if we did something clever we just take the longest prefix the number itself and then ask does that exist in the prefix hash set if it does well then we're done this is the longest prefix that we can get with this particular number Now, if it doesn't, let's try the next biggest prefix. We can do that by just taking the smallest number and removing it, and then we have this prefix left. And then we check, well, does that one exist? This time it does. So it's of length three, and now we're actually done. That's the longest prefix we could get with this particular number. We would kind of do the same thing for all the other numbers, but again, we'd see that this is the one that found the longest one. And so this way, The overall time complexity is basically limited to doing the conversions, taking each number and getting the prefix out of it for each of these two arrays. So if we do that for this array, it's going to be roughly O of M times like that log constant plus N times the log. So this is the overall time complexity, and this is pretty much the most optimal solution. I will show you briefly a second solution to this problem. But I think this one is honestly more simple and it's just as efficient. So remember what we're going to do. We're going to pick one of these two arrays. Ideally, we would pick the smaller one because that's the one we're going to have to throw into memory. But it doesn't really matter, honestly, in my humble opinion. But you could like swap these like you could do something like this if a uh, length of array one is larger than length of array two. Then you could say array one is going to be equal to array two and array two is going to be equal to array one. If you're feeling spicy, you could do something like that. You know, I don't really care, but I'm just putting it there anyway. And then we're going to have that hash set. I'm going to call it the prefix hash set. And we're going to go through array one for n in array one. The reason I'm picking array one is just because of this comparison. This way, we kind of guarantee that array one will be the smaller one or they will be equal in length. And then for each of these numbers, I'm going to say While that number is non-zero, I'm going to take that number and add it to the hash set like this. 
and then I'm going to remove the smallest digit. So this is that clever thing I was talking about. If we have a number, let's call it one, two, three, four, we wanna add all of the prefixes to the hash set. It doesn't necessarily mean we have to add the prefixes like this, like from left to right. We could add the biggest prefix first and then the second biggest and the uh, third biggest, et cetera, et cetera. So that's pretty much what I'm doing here. Now, another slight optimization you could make here is in some cases, we might get similar numbers. Like we might have a number here, one, two, three, four, and then we might have another number, one, two, three, four, five. And then this value itself is different from any of the prefixes within this one. But then after we chop off this digit, well, now it's identical to this one. And therefore we've probably added all of the prefixes before. So a slight optimization you can make here is while it's non-zero and the number is not already in the prefix hash set, because if it is, then we know it and all of its other prefixes have probably also been added as well. Not probably, like we're 100% certain that that's the case. Okay, now that we're done there, you probably know how to finish the code. We want to get like the length of the longest prefix. So I'm gonna have a variable for that and that's what we're gonna end up returning. And now to compute it, let's go through all the numbers in the second array. And remember, we're not just doing this. We're not just checking if n is in the prefix set, then we're going to you know, set the length, let's say to this, maximizing it between that and the length of this number. And the easiest way to do that we could write a helper function to just count the digits in this number, but the easier way to do that is to convert it into a string and then get the length of that string if your interviewer allows you to do that. Otherwise, I don't think it would be hard to count the digits of a number. It's just that this is more concise. Now, remember, this does not work. We can't just check if that number is in the prefix hash set. We have to check it and all of its prefixes. And we're going to do that by checking the longest prefix first. So let's do this while n is not in the prefix set, go ahead and check the smaller one. So basically take this and divide it by 10. Now at some point, n might equal zero and maybe like it just doesn't exist in the prefix set. So that's a case, so let's do this. While n is not zero and it's not in the prefix set, we'll be doing that. And then at the end, I think this actually does work. Just if n is in the prefix set, then let's do it. Otherwise, it's probably zero. So you could check this or you could check, I guess it's technically more efficient to check if it's not equal to zero because hashing does have some overhead. So I think this is more efficient and you could make it more concise just by doing this. If any of this Python stuff is new to you, you can consider checking out my uh, Python for Coding Interviews course on Neatcode.io. But I do believe this is pretty much the entire code unless I'm missing something. Uh, but running it, actually, we do see it does work and it does look really efficient this time. This is pretty much the most efficient solution, though there is a second one that technically is as efficient. And let me just quickly show you the leak code editorial which I think is a little bit misleading. So in the first solution, they say that the time complexity is m times like the log constant that we were talking about plus n times the log constant. And that's a more precise way of giving the time complexity. And then in the second one, I don't know what they're smoking that makes them want to do this, but then they say m times d and then n times d. And they say d is the number of digits in a single number. A number has that many digits and that's equivalent to doing the log base 10 of that number they're literally equivalent so i don't know why they put a different time complexity here i really don't know both of them should technically simplify to o of m plus n they kind of make it seem like this try solution is more efficient i'm pretty sure the person who wrote this editorial just doesn't understand math or maybe this is ai generated i'm really not sure but you know the seasoned leak code veteran understands that usually these editorials are not very useful, but I'll briefly just go over the try solution. I won't be coding it up, but conceptually it's going to be similar to what we did. It's just that instead of using a hash set, we are going to be using a try, which technically is gonna be less efficient. Honestly, the idea is gonna be the same. Let's say from one of the arrays, we just take each of the number and insert it into the try based on the digits. So digit by digit, we'll let's say add one. So like we'll have something like this. This is the prefix, then we'll have a one zero. And instead of adding a separate, you know, couple nodes for one zero, we kind of consolidate these two together. Since they share the same prefix, they should have the same prefix in the try. So here to add one zero, we would add this and then to add one zero zero we would add this and now from the second array let's assume it has something just like this 
for this example. And just to make the try a bit more interesting, let's say we did have a two here and maybe a zero here. You know, just add a couple more here. Let's say one and then two. So now for this number, we wanna know what's the longest prefix that it has matching any of the numbers from the other array. Well, to do that, we just kind of go digit by digit. One is here, so from the root of the try, we're not gonna go here, we're obviously gonna go here. Okay, so that's one digit so far. So the prefix is at least of length one. Then the next digit is zero. Does this have a zero? Yep, it does. And then another zero, it does. And then there's nothing more after that. We wanna find the fourth digit, but we can't. So we have the longest as three digits. That's what we return. I'm not going to code up the solution. It's much longer. In a real interview, I think you'd much rather prefer doing the hash map solution since it's just as efficient. You can clearly see that the time complexity of checking the longest prefix of a number is going to be bounded by the number of digits in that number. Same thing with inserting the numbers into the try. For each number, we're going to have to go through all of the digits. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Going to be adding some really cool improvements soon. Have a good day.